to split with Wingate. Uh, you solidify yourselves in the conference championship. You got to play Wingate again, though. But uh, I'm sure a little bit of relief knowing that you're in after everything that you fought through this year. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm very proud for the guys that uh, to be on the road after what happened yesterday, which was a tough loss. I mean, they got they got beat up a little bit, and to respond the way they did uh, that first game, which obviously allowed us to get in. Um, very proud of them, very happy for them that they get the opportunity to go on to that conference tournament despite some of the things that they had to overcome. So you're right. Uh, uh, what happened yesterday and what they had to overcome, it was outstanding. Two things stood out to me. Vince Apicella, obviously a complete game uh, against this Wingate group. And then offensively, top of the order, Joe Tipton, Brandon Roberts, competitive at bats and solid contact every single time up there. No question. Vince Apicelli was tremendous. Uh, Joe, I thought all weekend was, was hard contact. I thought uh, Roberts had an outstanding weekend. Bo Osmus had a big hit. Jurjevic did what he had to do. So we got hits when we needed to uh, at times in that first game. The Really the MVP of that game was uh, Coach Herring, Blake Herring. He did a tremendous job with the game plan. We allowed him to call that game, and I thought he was outstanding. He was the reason I think that his calling of the pitches I think was outstanding. And uh, I think it helped Vinny uh, execute better. And um, no question, those are tough bats that you have to keep at bay. And I thought Coach Herring was the MVP of that. Um, and second game you go into, and you got a chance to win that game and compete. And, and that's, you know, again, we got to teach some of our guys. We have some guys, we're giving up five runs in an inning in a close game. And we got some guys in that bench that are almost enjoying the game. And, and sometimes we got to teach kids that, you know, you don't walk into a funeral parlor and there's a funeral going on or walk into an emergency room and there's an emergency going on and you're cracking a joke and you're laughing. you got to realize sometimes the severity that some other people are hurting right now and some other people are still competing and it does no good to take yourself out of that moment. You can't do that as a family. You can't do that as a competitor, you know, and I think we got to learn. Some of our guys have to learn to keep competing. Whether you're in the game or not, you're always competing because your teammates are competing, your family's competing. So you can't just take the um, severity of the situation and, and have laughter at it. I, and we need some guys to learn that. Some of them are seniors. And uh, I think the other thing they got to learn is have that killer instinct. Constantly compete. Every pitch you're competing. You can never let up. You got guys like Spitz in that lineup who you can't make mistakes with guys like that. That's how he mm -hmm. ended up with seven RBIs in that second game. If we could teach them to constantly compete and never give up until that guy says the game is over or until your boss says the job is done, keep competing till the end. And then be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of the people around you and what's going on. So you have a sense. So it's called common sense of what's happening. So you don't look like the uh, court jester when there's a severity of a situation going on. I hope we learn that before we uh, get out into that real world.